Hi everyone, welcome to the burlap bunny tutorial. We are going to be making this cute little guy and what you need in order to complete him is out of your box, you're going to need the burlap that has the paper on the back. Please keep it together with these clothespins. At the end of the video, I'll show you how we can attach these clothespins to your frame so that it can help it stand. You're also going to need your bottle of cream paint, this little wood tool, black, red, and white acrylic paint. And this is actually, um, it's called vermilion. Vermilion, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, this is the red that's in your paint set. And um, it's got more of an orangey tone, but it'll work for what we wanna do. You're also gonna need your paintbrush, and if you have a plastic or tin lid out of the recycling, and your canvas. Now, if you haven't done the Flowers in Bloom tutorial, um, what you're going to do is you're gonna get an adult to help you take this off. It's just attached with staples, and what I usually do is I just, um, let me move my camera. So I usually, when it's like this, and I just sort of work this up like this, all the way around. Take the nice wooden frame out. For this project, we do not need the canvas, so now you have an extra canvas in case you wanna do a bunny on here, which would be really cute because you could use some darker colors, um, or you could do another Flowers in Bloom or anything else. Now, like I said in the other tutorial dealing with making a frame out of a canvas, um, you never know what you're gonna get under there, but it's always wood and um, this is just, I got this idea from a friend of mine on Instagram and I actually really love it because it's an affordable way to frame your artwork um, and give it kind of a natural look. So the frames aren't totally perfect, but that's okay. It get, it's kind of like a rustic feel for this project anyway. So what I want you to do is we're going to... Um, this is, I'm gonna do it this way so that when you're watching the video, uh, this is the top and this is the bottom. So we're going to use our squeeze bottle. Um, burlap has a lot of texture to it and that's actually why I love it for this project is because um, it just kind of gives the bunny like a furry feel. And so it's kind of hard to paint on, but I thought with this squeeze bottle, it made it a lot easier. So we're gonna start our head right down here. You need to make sure that um, you're thinking about how the outer edge of your burlap is going to be covered. So if you, whatever you paint right here, it will be covered up. So try to stay in the middle. Um, and I also need to do bunny ears. So I'm gonna kind of start my head closer to the bottom give this a shake and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle with my squeeze bottle which is kind of fun right and then I'm going to make his body I'm going to come down like this and like this and you can smooth out all those lines like this with your paintbrush after and then I'm going to come up for his ears and up for his ears. And you can just shake it to, and basically you're gonna make an outline of your bunny like this. And then you're gonna use your brush to paint, to use that paint that you squeezed on and fill it in. And you're gonna have to squeeze more on, but this just gets you started. And it's thought this project would be really fun um, because we don't typically use burlap as our paper, and it might spark some ideas in you to do other projects with burlap, or maybe you wanna do another project and you'll think of something other than traditional white paper to do your 
picture on. So I'm just going to go like this. And you can see it's starting to and go right down the middle and then work my way out. And the nice thing about the burlap is it has that nice brownie tone, which means that it's okay if it's kind of poking through. And I'm just going to make sure that I have this all covered up. Give it a good shake. And give it some more. And if your end gets a little clogged or it's not coming out, these um, you can cut down a bit more. I'm just going to try and make this one work. Or maybe I do have some scissors here, so I'll show you that. I'm just going to cut it a bit lower. Now be careful though because it's probably going to, yeah, now it comes out uh, quite a bit more. So however, um, however low you cut your tip, the lower you cut it, um, the faster this will come out. There we go. Just going to cover this up and I don't even have to go all the way down to the edge because remember that's going to be covered up with our um, with our frame. So here's my cute little bunny body. You can go as wide or as skinny as you want with that. And I'm going to paint his face in. And every time I do these projects, they come up different. And so that's why I'm always really excited when you send me pictures because these are just a guide, right? And it's really exciting for me to see how you took this project and turned it into your own. And a lot of times mine turn out a little bit different than the original because I'm doing it upside down. But, oh, I just think that's so cute. He's just a cute little guy. Now you can see on this one, I did his body a little bit skinnier and you can wisp it out. Um, so you can see that burlap a bit more. So what I mean by that is, I'll make him a little wider to show you that, but you've still got white on the sides, but it's not completely solid like that. And that looks really cute on the sides to give it that detail. And you can even do that a little bit over here. Kind of gives the illusion of fur. And I'll come up like this and give it a little bit of that on the ears. It's almost like giving it a, a border. Okay, now I want to do a little bit of pink in the ears and we don't have pink in that paint set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze some white. I'm gonna add just a touch, like the smallest touch of this red. Let's see just how much, even just that little bit. And I've still got cream on my paintbrush, but that's okay. See, even just that teeny tiniest bit. Oh, that's a nice peach, but I need a little bit more because this is going to take more. So I'm going to put more of my white there and do another little teeniest touch of red. There we go. And I think one of the funnest things about painting is getting to mix your own colors. And you can see, oh, that looks so cute. Just a very subtle pinky color. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna brush it into the middle of these ears and give it like a little blush look. Oh, I love it. 
Oh, you got to see it in person. Now, if you want it a little bit darker, just add more of, oops, that's too much. But this is good to show you too, if you've blobbed it like that and how you can run that into your white. Okay, so I've got my white. I'm going to take more than I did before because um, I'm just gonna show you the difference and how much darker you can go. It's a little bit more rich. So you can go with the subtle blush, you can see beside kinda, or this one's like a little bit darker, pinky. Let's see how that looks on the ears. I'm just gonna brush it up. That's really cute too. A little bit more noticeable. And grab some more. And the reason that we left that piece of paper on the back is because this paint totally soaks through the burlap. And so it would get all over your table. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this too for the nose. So on here, I'm going to just do a dab for the nose. I'm gonna build it up a bit more, which means I'm layering the paint on top of it, on top of itself in this picture, just so that you can see it. These are really light colors, so I'm just layering it. And then I'm going to take some black and I really like this little wood tool. It's just like a little skewer and I've used it for a couple of art projects. It almost looks like a little pencil. Kind of blurry showing you that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip my pencil and I'm gonna go underneath my nose and I'm just gonna do like a little line here and a little line coming this way. It's kind of like a V for my rabbit nose, my little bunny nose. And then I'm gonna do a line going down. And there's his cute little nose. Now I'm gonna use my paintbrush for his eyes. And I realize I don't have my little paint cloth. So when you're painting, it's nice to have a little cloth that you can wipe your hands and your brush off on. Sometimes I have a little glass of hot water um, to wipe, but this is all really light. Um, the only thing that's pretty dark is the black. So I didn't think to bring it. But anyway, so you're going to take your brush for the eyes. And for this bunny, I think it just adds a real cute look to have the eyes far apart. And I'm just, I just dab them on like this. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and just dab them on. You don't have to worry about them looking exactly the same. But there he is, he is just so sweet, so cute. Um, one thing I'll show you, because I can see one side of his face is a little rounder than the other, and I actually don't mind that. Um, but I'll show you how you can even that out if, if that bothers you. And this year is a little bit shorter. So what I can do is I can add a little length just by going like this. And I'm just bringing this paint up and over. And then on this one, I'm going to give this one just like a touch more width, which means I'm making it a little bit wider. Okay, there we go. And then on here, I'm just gonna add a little bit right up here 
and just going to make his head come out a little bit more right there. And I could have just left it. it I thought it actually looked totally fine, but I know that sometimes it's nice to have those little tricks and tips too. So there he is. Oh my goodness. And then once you put the frame on, he is just so sweet. Um, okay. So now I would let this dry completely before I framed it, but for the video, I'm just going to frame it for you. So we need these later. Um, what I'm going to do is on the back, I'm, you do need a hot glue gun. That's one of the only things that's not in the kit. Um, so I hope you have one of these and if not, then you'll have to save the framing part till you can get one. Um, I'm going to put some hot glue in the corners. And then I'm going to lift my bunny so you can see there's a little imprint. You can even make something cool with that later. And I'm going to lay my burlap onto the back of my frame, just like this. And this is a part that you might want help with um, because it is, uh, the guns are hot, right? And I'm just gonna stretch that. Oops. I think it glitched there for a minute. The guns are hot, so you're gonna to wanna to stretch it out. Um, oh, that looks so good. Okay, so now I need to glue on my, um, I need to glue on these, and I actually just need to grab another stick of glue. So hold tight, I'm gonna see how quick I can get this from down. Oh, no, I've got one right here. Oh, phew. Okay, I thought I had everything I need. If you've been following me for a while, you know that this is basically how my videos go because I don't know how to edit them yet. So I just roll and go with it. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do before I stick those on, so I have my glue gun, I'm going to attach the burlap to the top now. I've got my corners secure. So now I'm just gonna go like this and run it across the top and it's hot, you guys. So um, please be careful. Maybe the parents can do the gluing part. I'm gonna do the same thing along the bottom. Okay. And so that's nice and secure. You can also do that, run some glue on either side. Okay. And then the trick that I learned for these closed pins so that they can act as a little backing for you. Now, what you need to remember is um, when you move, so see now they click like that, but this little uh, metal part always has to be in its proper groove for it to work and it slides out really easily when you're moving it back and forth. But what I like about gluing that on is that, um, so you can have your frames to have a nice little stand, but also when you wanna store it, you just have to go like this and see it kind of came out. You just have to run it back into the groove. But now it's nice to store as well. So when I glued these, I had to play around because you don't wanna glue them right um, flush with the bottom of the frame. You want them a touch up. So what I did is I put glue along my clothespin and when I glued it on, I glued it about a centimeter from the bottom just like not that much it's pretty tiny tiny little amount if you can see that so I glued it like that and then I just glued the other side the same so 
So let me get glue on there. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold them till they dry. Doesn't take very long for hot glue to dry, but um, I don't want it to pop off. So i got my cute little bunny ready for Easter. And then all you do is you slide the top of the clothespin into the first little curve. And then you do that again on here. And then you've got a little bunny picture that stands up. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed doing the burlap bunny. I did want to quickly, um, no, I won't do that, I guess. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that bunny comes out at Easter and reminds you of the time that you did the spring box with Miss Mervyn. Bye.